Hearthstone Championship Tour, your winter preliminaries. I am D2, and joining me on the desk is Brian, Brian Kibler, Kibler of Brian Kibler Gaming. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> also joining me is Giannis Avita McConan of Team Liquid. Guys, we have a really interesting match coming up on our hands between Nyman and Coleman. Nyman, a player who was disqualified from playing in the 2015 Hearthstone Championship and now he's looking to make a comeback. Yeah, he's really here for redemption. You know, he wants to prove that that he belongs here in the the competitive Hearthstone scene. And Kulaman is a player who uh, many of the the uh, European casters here have told us that they they've seen a lot of and expect great things from already. Yeah, we saw Kulaman be brave and bring three combo decks in uh, in form of Freeze Mage, Oil Rogue, and the Patron Warrior. And those are the, some of the most difficult decks to pilot. And he has made it so far with them. It's going to be really interesting to see how he's going to do against Naiman. Yeah, we, we actually have yet to see Naiman on uh, on camera, so we don't have quite the insight into exactly uh, what he is playing, the specific uh, builds of those decks. Uh, we just saw his lineup on there as well. What do you think about a D2? Well, I mean, Naiman is a player who was obviously pretty accomplished in 2015. Just looking at our notes, he got top four Gfinity in 2015. Also tweets a lot about his high ladder performances then. So even though he was disqualified from playing in the championship series last year, he's able to basically bring it back this year. Has obviously a lot of accomplishments. And like you said, Coleman is someone who all the pro players seem to be aligning with. A player that we saw earlier today. So it's going to be a pretty good match, I'm, I'm expecting. Yeah, we, we, we saw that the, the bans from the two players, and that, that, that could of, often reveal a lot about what, uh, what the lineups, uh, sort of the texture of the lineups can be. Uh, we saw that the, the Shaman that Namian had was actually the ban choice for Kulam. What do you think about that? I think that's an easy one. The combo decks generally, especially the Rogue, struggles a lot against the Shaman. The Shaman is just too fast, and the Rogue will never get to do things like the Auctioneer preparation plays. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right. I'd actually forgotten that he was playing. He was playing the auctioneer version yeah. too. It wasn't even oil rogue. It was auctioneer. Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, I actually wasn't able to see this, so I'm pretty excited to see this matchup. Three combo decks. I mean, anything else you need? You can tell us, Savits. Well, uh, uh, we don't know the warlock deck. What deck is going to be? Um, right. And uh, actually, what, what was the ban from the other side? Uh, I think it was mage. It was the, ma the mage. That was mage is yes. gone. Okay. So. So uh, we're going to get to see the Warlock, and I would actually imagine that, uh, considering the other lineup, that the, the, the Warlock deck would not be a uh, Zoo Warlock, although that's been the most popular choice for a lot of players. It just wouldn't make the make as much sense to bring it in a combo-based lineup like it does in a more aggressive uh, style. It would also make a lot of sense uh, given his ban of the Shaman deck. The Shaman de uh, deck is, you know, as a very aggressive Shaman deck, we, we assume it's an aggressive Shaman right. deck. We haven't really seen much in the way of mid-range Shaman recently. Uh, that would be very strong against uh, <laughs> Combo Warlock in particular. Right. Yeah, definitely not seeing any mid-range Shaman at the moment. The only real viable deck in competitive play right now is that, you know, basically face Shaman, the aggressive Shaman that likes to hit you hard with that Doom Hammer. It looks like we're getting into game one here between these two players. Coleman obviously back here, and it's going to be what looks to be a Tempo Mage versus the Patron Warrior from Coleman. Yeah, so Naiman with an aggressive lineup, not only bringing the Shaman, but his Mage is also not Freeze, but instead he's playing the Tempo Mage. Looking at a quite a good starting hand with that coin, he can keep, he can just give all of that one, two, four. Yeah, that's that's an excellent start from uh, Nyman here. Uh, one of the, the big strengths of this, obviously, mana worm, but also unstable portal, giving him something productive to do on turn two that can pump his mana worm and potentially represent a tempo play as well. Yep, not looking too bad for Coleman either, though. There's the fiery war axe, and that is the best card you can hope for in your starting hand against uh, an aggressive mage. Uh, literally, if each of these players could choose one card in their starting hand, they, they got it. It would have been, <laughs> been mana worm, it would be war axe. <laughs> yes. so. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be up to the unstable portal to be fighting something for Nyman here. Otherwise, it's really not thing to do to his I mean the good thing for him is he could play the flam cannon for that probably berserker if he doesn't want oh to. wow that's interesting. That's, yeah that's very interesting um, it could obviously there's obviously that drawback right it puts the other card back into your hand but it's a big boy I was just about to say that he could have coined out the 5-5 the five five there, but it could have been very weak to the uh, slam in combination with the Fiery War Axe. And while he didn't have the slam just yet, he did get it from the top, so it kind of worked out for Nyman. Yeah, Nyman also potentially wants to use his coin to put out Shredder next turn. Oh, yeah. Uh, because right now his, his curve is a little bit awkward, though. That Ambusher actually, interestingly, <laughs> could perhaps represent uh, just a, a minion he can play here on turn three in addition to a, a Flame Cannon to kill that. Oh, yeah. Right, that works, works out, out perfectly. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. <laughs> Fits right in the curve, and that's a that's a big threat. Kolomon has to you know has to at least be thinking about okay, how do I deal with this? There's the weird thing with the the drawback on Ambusher. He may want to kind of leave that in play because it strands other minions in Nyman's hands in a way. But it, it does do five damage a turn every time. It <laughs> yeah, I think Nyman would just sit there and keep hitting the face in that spot, right? You just uh, yeah. 
I mean, oh, I mean, it's something that you could possibly do. Potentially, even just go with a frostbolt to what? shut off that ability but to attack into it. If he coins out the Azure Trick, that's not the worst thing to bounce right. back to. Right. <laughs> that's true. It's true. Yeah. Oh, the greed coming out from Kolomon here, yeah. going with that Acolyte of Pain, realizing he can just take it out whatever comes next. Duplicate is something we don't see too often, or I should say, every single time in Tempo Mage, but it could work out pretty well here. I mean, four mana five fives just coming out of the hand seems pretty good. Yeah. They do sort of strand other minions in Nyman's hand. I'm not sure that's what I would want to duplicate, but it, it does put Coleman in an interesting position because, you know, do. it, it, does he just leave this 5-5 five, five up continuously? I don't know. I think he has to go for the... the Nyman has to go for the coin Drake here. Well, the Strader looks so nice. What if the Ambusher dies to something like a Slam, Fire War Axe, or an Execute? He loses so much Stembo there. Uh, he still does with the Azure Drake, but he at least potentially it's picks true. up an additional card in the future turn. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is an interesting spot. This is one of the, the reasons that I, I really like uh, a lot of the, the, the cards that do add random elements to the game. Things like whether they're Portal or the Discover mechanic. They can put players in situations they just haven't been in before because, you know, oh, hey, yeah. you, you never played against a Tempo <laughs> Mage deck that had an Ambusher in yeah, exactly. This doesn't happen. It's, you, have to, oh, you have to figure it out. Yeah, he's yeah. going to go for that. Interesting. I, I, don't, I mean, the coin, uh, coin Drake isn't like that obvious because the coin is very valuable going forward in the game because I'm certain that he's playing some Flame Wakers, so that will allow him to combo some, uh, some for some free missiles, or maybe going out to Dr. Boom on turn six if he picks it up. Yeah, the coin is a particularly powerful card in, in Tempo Mage, like you mentioned, because of the synergy with the spell-based things, whether they're, they're uh, the other Mana Worm he might pick up later, uh, or Flame Waker, things like that. Right, but here, he is <laughs> that drawback is quite bad for Naiman now from that Ambusher, but it is what it is, and... Uh, the Shredder is returning to his hand. Yeah, this is why I thought that Duplicate might not have been the worst thing. Obviously, having all these minions in your hand that kind of have anti-synergy with each other because they pop back might not be the greatest, but right now, Nyman, I mean, he has a full hand to be, I mean, not a full hand completely, but he has a pretty big hand for a Tempo Mage, so not looking the worst, but basically, Coleman, his job here is to just stave off the Tempo Mage. Mm -hmm. Looking at this hand from Nyman, I actually think that there's a, like a decent chance that he could just go for a value game right here. Normally, when playing Tempo Mage, you, like, the, like the, the name of the deck already says it, you want to play for Tempo, you want to play it fast and try to end the game quickly. But with a duplicate and double Azure Drakes, I wouldn't be too surprised if it just shows, okay, I think I go for value and maybe use some of the removal on my opponent's minions. And yeah, duplicate Drake. in particular does give that additional element to the deck, uh, especially if you're playing against, say, Control Warrior. You would you would you know be really afraid of running into all the big late game legendaries, per perhaps Justicar Trueheart, really closing out your window of, of potentially winning the game. But like you said, you know, in this matchup, you can play a much more value oriented game because they don't really have those same cards. We do see that Coleman, however, does have the two big legendaries typically yeah. in Patriot decks already in his hand. That's true, but this turn is looking a little bit lackluster. Uh, what can he really do? Like those battle rates are looking pretty awkward. I would have been surprised if he cycled one of them, only drawing one card. That's not what you want to do, but I think he has to do it and hope to pick up a dead spite. Oh, slam, Ooh, that is, slam, slam is, is perfect, perfect yeah. here. So in that case, obviously the battle rage works out pretty well, even though I mean, even though it feels kind of bad, it worked out perfectly for him. And going back to what you're saying, Savits, I mean, obviously Coleman is in the better spot than he was last turn, but at the same time, Grim Pageant is a deck that its its strength is in the fact that he can play mid range, but also has like, those combo effects. But the fact that you have to have those combo oh. pieces in hand, as yeah, that uh, Arcane Blast pretty now, good here. That's a good show. You could even oh, play the wow. Mana Worm and then coin yeah. out the Arcane Blast, but there is that Fire Vorax waiting, so I wouldn't mm -hmm. blame him for just blasting him. Yeah, I was actually thinking we were going to see the Azure Drake into Coin Frostbolt that turn, but the Arcane Blast, the perfect, the perfect answer. Yeah. All right, do you just slam the Dr. Boom here, or what can you go for if you're a Kalamon? Obviously, that Dreadcore still, it just feels kind of bad to not be able to get that uh, that value out, you know, the, the reduced mana cost, but at the same time, Dr. Boom is green. I think in particular, playing Dr. Boom uh, when your opponent does not have a secret out is fairly important, because right. there's a lot, of, a lot of instances where you won't be able to safely play Dr. Boom into a potential mirror entity against Tempo Mage, and uh, the coast is clear here. I think he wants to play it. Yeah, seems like a very good time to just go for it here. Also, the, the optional plays seemed fairly weak with that Trade Corsair and the maybe like Unstable Ghoul, but that wouldn't really work out so well against the Drake. Right, so how many secrets do you expect from this deck? We're seeing the duplicate right here. Typically, it's something like double mirror entity or mirror entity counterspell, maybe double mirror entity counterspell, something like that, but with the, with duplicate, the duplicate in yeah. hand, yeah, I mean, maybe there's three secrets. What do you guys expect here? I mean, it's tough to say, and that's one of the reasons that Tempo Mage can be a tricky deck to play against sometimes, because, you know, secrets, well, they're, they're kind of secret. You don't, you, don't really, <laughs> you don't really know what they are until they happen to you. Yeah, and it's one of those things that the different players 
uh, prefer to play different mm -hmm. amount of secrets. Some might play two. I've even seen some versions with only one secret and two scientists a while ago, but I think that most paper players have drifted Ooh. away from uh, that style. These arcane missiles are absolutely huge. Let's see where they land. Picks off a boom bot, starts getting damage on Dr. Boom. Hits the face, that's perfect. That is the okay. best. Well, other than killing off the mad scientist, which would have been nice as well, that's pretty good for an in here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, a good result from that boom, but the Arcane Missile itself was not the best one ever, but it was a decent. Right. The, uh, the the Grom here, just as a removal effect, seems fairly attractive, I have to imagine. Yeah, all of a sudden, Colomon is at 14 health. He needs to start he, getting things, things off the board. Yeah, I mean, while, while Nyman didn't have the most aggressive opening, just getting a couple hits in here, and Colomon hasn't been gaining armor through any, any, any means, and uh, has been using his weapons as removal, so he's taking quite a bit of damage. It's true, but Naiman doesn't have any burn in his hand just yet, so uh, Colemon, we, we know that Colemon can still use that fiery war axe here and just uh, take a little bit of damage, but from his point of view, he might already be thinking, of, uh, should he be like maybe taunting up or uh, going for some card draws for armor smith? Yeah, it looks like it's probably going to be an execute play here. Ooh, doesn't kill the bad wow. scientist. That's actually that was... good for Colemon. Oh, he, well, I I said, that was, yeah, that, that, I, th I think that overall went, went pretty well because he doesn't want to see a mirror entity come out. So exactly. He, he could potentially right. play some sort of large minion this turn. Or any minion, really. Yeah, no. Any of the minions in his hand with the exception of Unstable Ghoul. Yep, here we go. So going down to the wire here, gonna go pick up some cards first and then play out an Execute. Plus, I imagine the Dread Corsair and the Pallet Shredder. Let's see if he got it all out. And probably gonna attack this Mana Worm as well, so... Looks like he probably did. There you go. Yep. Yeah, there it is. So down to 11 life, not the safest position, but Nyman with no actual burn to players in his hand. Arcane Blast he just picked up could take out that Dr. Boom, but it cannot go face. No. Unfortunately not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's not really all that much to do. I guess just uh, maybe Shredder into the duplicate. It's kind of decent. But then so he can ping. Yeah, you kind of want to ping here. Right, yeah. he'd love yeah. to be able to get the Shredder and duplicate on board and get rid of the Dread Corsair with his hero power, but he's one mana short, including the coin. Do you think there's some hesitation here because there might be a second duplicate? Maybe he doesn't want to play a second Mad Scientist? Uh, maybe. I mean, you, it could be a double duplicate Tempo Mage deck. Those are those are actually, uh, huh? well, clearly not, as he, uh, his duplicate is still lit up here. Well, he could have other secrets, but yeah. yeah. So actually, the fact that he started highlighting it after maybe seems like it could it's, be. It's possible, yeah. Because he, he was, about whether he it was, was there. seeing yeah. if it was possible for him to still do that. Uh, oops. He is, he is holding on to that coin. Huh. He's taking it, taking it with him to the afterlife, potentially. <laughs> could it be Effigy? Because he didn't Possibly, point yeah. That's, 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 that's another, another uh, possible option. All right, so for Colomon here, has a few options. Could go for the Grump, but it's pretty scary into yeah. a secret. Yeah, sure is. And so maybe he just goes for that Unstable Ghoul, see if it procs, and then go for the Despite afterward. The unfortunate part about that is, yes, you get to you know put in that hero power, but you're not really using your mana too efficiently. Well, I mean, uh, the the Unstable Ghoul Death Spite Hero Power, I think, is, is is totally reasonable for a turn here. If you right. do, if you do. Uh, get your opponent's mirror entity out of the way. You're, you're able to get in four damage with your Shredder as well. And then you still have Grom in a rage and a Death Spite up. Yeah, I mean, just slamming the Grom, hoping that it's not mirror entity, he <laughs> would still have the inner rage in That's his hand true. to enrage his true. own Grom to take out the copy. If, if he does, yeah, he has the option of just playing Grom if he does want And to. we still have four health left, I believe. So actually, he's going to go for the lethal oh. here over two turns. Not something I, I actually have. like this a lot. I think this is a very strong play here. Going for the ghoul as well. So mm -hmm. with the inner rage, Grom and the death spot, it would be enough. You see, it is mirror entity, so... Will Coleman have the ability to win after this? We'll see. Arcan Intellect's a pretty good pickup here for Nyman. I imagine he just starts off with that. Can but he pick up Lethal here, maybe somehow? <laughs> Flame Cannon and Frostbolt. Well, that's, he can freeze face with that if he wants to. Right, that's, I mean, after you saw your opponent basically hit yeah. your face, you're expecting Grom at this point. Yeah, it, it's likely to be Grom, mm -hmm. but the, does it help? It might help, depending on how much he can clear the other minions for. <clears throat> He can actually kill both other minions if he if he wants. He can attack his what shredder into the unstable ghoul, attack his unstable ghoul into the shredder with the double death rattle and kill both of them. That, however, leaves him in a position where ooh, that that wasn't really what he wanted to hit. I don't think. No, I think it was reasonable either it was okay, way. Though. I mean, because he does get now the, he, yeah, yeah, he, he face. 
You can push damage to face as well. Maybe play this Mad Scientist. He could go for this Duplicate, though. Uh, get a couple. I mean, if he's worried about dying, right? Getting a couple Unstable Ghouls in your hand is not yeah, too bad. Yeah, usually you're not terribly happy about Unstable Ghouls uh, being you know, what you might be duplicating. But right now, I mean, That's... Nyman's also at the point where you know his cards are not that valuable. Uh, you know, the, the, the duplicate, if the game is ending in a couple turns, right. it's not going to do much. It's actually but pretty close to Lethal with just like using the inner rage yeah. on the ghoul and then whirlwinding after the Chrome is on the board. But the problem with that is that the Shredder is also going to die from his mm -hmm. side because one of the damage would be from the whirlwind and another one from the ghoul. Yeah, All right, so tense times here for Coleman. What can he do to. I, I guess he doesn't have any sort of weird, crazy lethal here, right? So. Um, you, you, so you have to stay alive, essentially. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, at Coleman's position now, he's he's kind of playing defense. He's actually he's actually at risk of dying just to the board. He can only go up to seven with his hero power, and there's that much damage on board. So I think you just use this Grom as removal. If he's been paying attention, he knows there's a coin and a card in Nyman's hand. Mm -hmm. So, and obviously, if it was a fireball, I think he'd be dead already. Yeah, I mean, at this point, there's no lethal to be found, so without like a maybe some ridiculous shredder outcome. Yeah, he can see what comes out. He, he, yeah. he needs to see what comes off the shredders first, regardless. You know, his is gonna oh, die here. Flame flank totem. No, that wouldn't still do it. I'm not trying to think of lethal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now probably gonna play. Uh, oh, actually, I think he wants to play Grom, Grom and then first, Whirlwind yeah. because if there's another mirror entity, he doesn't want to give the right, opponent the. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So probably gonna kill off this Mech Warper here, and no armor yep. up. So is is there gonna be lethal for Nyman if he picks it up? Flame oh, Waker. It could, it could be. be. <laughs> it was all good. face. Yeah. He, he really. In, uh, <laughs> what's, what's the odds? Like one in eighty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Fire Lord like guide me it. right here. Uh, <laughs> All right, so that is uh, not no. it, unfortunately, and that uh, is, well, well, rage is well, going Nyman, to steal it. Nyman does not know that, that that there's an inner rage here, so yeah, that's true. So we're not gonna see a concede, but Golemon is not gonna miss this lethal. Well, this, so. I mean, this he could be counterspell. It could be counterspell. Oh, 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 there's, there's there a full cast yeah. There we go. <laughs> he should definitely test for the counterspell though, because yes. Nyman gives... is going to have the deck available. Mm -hmm. He it should actually play both, I would believe. I right? think so, too. Oh, oh. The, oh smart concede Yeah, right that, was, there. that was actually Brilliant. a very, a very <laughs> good concede from Nyman to not wow. potentially leak any more information. Yeah. Yeah, he had his finger on the concede that button right there. One of the few times where APM a concede and Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was one of the best concedes I've ever seen. Usually, <laughs> it really was. Man, that was an excellent concede, and I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Usually, when you're like, "Man, that concede was great," it's like kind of sarcastic. Yeah, it's like, exactly. no, that was actually <laughs> an intelligent strategic concede. Yes. So he doesn't know if it's not counterspell either, right? Because that was super quick. I don't think that the the game mm, could have gotten I, that no, that I, fast. I, I we would not. We would not have seen the graphic. We would yeah. not have seen. We saw the animation happen. We would not have seen that if counterspell happened. We would have seen the counterspell animations. Yeah, we saw the pop and the Grom, mm -hmm. I believe. So yes. uh, right, it, it right, right, was right. not counterspell. We know that there's three secrets. It could be effigy. It could be a second meter entry. Mm -hmm. So column one has to be kind of vigilant, right? And he's look. Oh, the bluff did go on my creature. So uh, one situation where the concede was not so good was that if it was vaporize. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's vaporize, I don't think he would you're have conceded. Giving, <laughs> yeah, you're giving away that you don't have vaporize. I suppose yeah, that that's is something. True. <laughs> well, you're giving away that you don't have vaporize you right up? now. <laughs> that's, that's true. That is true. Could still be in the deck. Maybe so, it's just a secret mage. It's not a temple mage, and if, if you did have vaporize, that would seriously level him if you get him with it later. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be pretty bad conceded in this situation. <laughs> but uh, but Coleman does get the win with his warrior deck, uh, and now has rogue and that uh, that warlock deck. As I believe you're saying, we have not quite seen yet. Uh, I've not left seen to it, uh, left to win. It could be an aggro warlock like that. Is, I, I believe it's something like eight out of ten or a nine out of ten have been the zoo warlocks mm -hmm. uh, that we've seen in this tournament. But considering his lineup, I, I would imagine that it's like maybe the Reno. Reno Leroy combo Warlock it, or something. It does like that. seem like it fits at least, you know. Whether I don't know about strategically, but stylistically, it seems like you know those are the, the kind of decks with Freeze Mage, Patron Warrior, and and not even just Oil Rogue, but Miracle Rogue, Gadgets and Auctioneer. Rogue. Right. So, I uh, I would imagine that's very likely what we're gonna see. Yeah, definitely it does go with his deck, and at the same time, I mean, we've seen some zoos kind of struggle, and the couple. Yep, there we go. Oh, oh yeah, nice. Yes. And the OTK with it. the with the Archangel this time. Yeah. Last time oh, okay. we saw it, it was the Leroy. Oh, that was close, though. What do you think about Leroy versus Arcane Golem? In these Personally, games? I like the Arcane Golem a little bit more. I think that sometimes you can close out the games a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. And also, you have the access to pulling off the combo without the Emperor. So if the Emperor is somewhere in your last few cards, you can still go for the Arcane Golem double power roaming faces. 
if you pick up the second uh, power overwhelming from a peddler. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and, and I, I think I tend to agree with you. Uh, the the versions of Reno Lock that I have liked to play, just because I think they're more fun, are the ones with mm -hmm. uh, with the Thaddeus brothers. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> like you get whenever you actually cast that twisting nether that we see in Coleman's hand with both of them on board. It, not only do you get tons of awesome animations, but you get two 11 11s in play. <laughs> How awesome is that? Yeah, one thing that, I, I mean, I've played that deck a lot as well, having, you know, the Thaddeus Brothers, Sa Salag and Fugin. Well, the one problem is that if you are facing any Finn Paladin, one deck I've wanted to see this entire yeah. time, we saw it once, but it's very weak if you don't mm -hmm. have that OTK potential. Well, and similarly, you you are actually uh, an underdog against the versions of Warlock that do have the burst combo, simply because right. you're trying to play this long attrition game, and they have the ability to just kill you for exactly. around 20 life. Exactly, yeah, that can be a very difficult matchup as well. But, but we are ooh. getting into this game with the Divine Favor filled yeah. Secret Paladin from Nyman, so a more aggressive kind of variant. Yeah, and that Divine Favor is a very important card in this matchup in particular. Uh, Warlock, in general, obviously has a lot of card draw power with its hero, hero power. But, he's just uh, going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, he's just, I'm just going to draw. <laughs> right. How many? I'll just draw five. Five, five cards. Five. Just turn three, draw five. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> He's not gonna not gonna, you know, waste any time. He didn't really have a particularly efficient play that turn either, so I totally I totally get uh just firing that off right there. Yeah, draw draw five or make a dude. I mean it's <laughs> it's pretty well, yeah. he had the Seeker Keeper. Seeker so he could have played no, Seeker true, Keeper true, true. into right, into right, right. recruit, but you know, he gets to draw five cards and reload and give himself a lot more options for future turns. Yeah, you can't say no to that. It's way too good to pass up. It's very likely that Coleman would also coin out the four drop, so then there's going to be less cards in his hand. Right. And uh, where do you cast the Divine Favor afterwards? Like at four mana? Five mana? His hand was also fairly clogged with relatively expensive cards. He had two four drops already it's in true. his hand. So it's not like he was going to be able to dump his hand to one or zero cards and then cast the Divine Favor. So using his mana very efficiently and uh, just getting a big hand right away. Yep. Some of those new, new cards that he picked up were a little bit on the weaker side with the Redemption and the Avenge. He would just like rather pick up one Mysterious Challenger than those two secrets, but still not too bad. If you think of it this way, though, if he hadn't gone for that, then maybe those are the next five cards that he gets, and he would have been <laughs> a really true. horrible spot. Oh, that's also true. It is true. You can think about it that way. Too. All right, well, we have some options here for Nyman. He can go for that Keeper of Oldemon to make that guy a bit smaller. Afterward, he can't really kill it still, but... I mean, it's just really nice to tur just uh, you know oh, hurt that guy for five, bring down some of his damage as well. We do see that there's the noble sacrifice on the board right now, so obviously a lot of options for Nyman with all those cards in hand. Yeah, I like kind of like the keeper of Uldaman. Just just use it here straight away. It does deal that five damage. Pilot the Shredder, also not a bad play. Gives him a pretty nice redemption potentially for the next turn. Yeah, with with the noble sacrifice up. Uh, no matter what, Coleman's going to be attacking that, if he does attack this turn, into a Noble Sacrifice. So it's it's not necessarily clear whether the uh, the Keeper uh, sort of neutering the power of that a little bit is, is nearly as relevant as it might be at a later stage of the game. I think that Keeper is probably one of the cards that, that can be pretty important to potentially break through like a large taunt minion right. in this matchup. And I, I think that, that Nyman might want to hold on to it uh, for a more crucial situation and just develop his board here. That's true. And I also think that he has a pretty nice follow-up in this situation with that uh, second Shredder and the Redemption, leaving him maybe with only two Shredders on the board, in which case Golemon has to... Uh, has the Redemption one of the Shredders, and that's not exactly what you would like to give your opponent. Right, so Knife Juggler comes in the hand. Actually, the second Knife Juggler. So going to be this uh, Shielded Minibot coming here for, or sorry, the Blessing of Kings on the Shielded Minibot. Maybe that's what oh, he was planning yeah. for the last turn, you know, being able to get this nice trade in. And he can use that Keeper later. I mean, it's a, basically one of the best cards in your in your deck, obviously. That's one of the best uses of Blessing of Kings is when you are able to use it on a Divine Shield minion to kill a large minion because you don't get any damage on your own minion. So you get the full value of Kings plus basically killing your opponent's minion. I don't think it gets any better than that. He, he didn't even waste any damage. That, that, that Twilight Trick was exactly <laughs> at 6 <laughs> HP. Exactly. And it feels really bad for Kalmon, for instance, to Owl here because you're not even taking out the Divine Shield that already got all of its value. So if you're Kalmon here, what do you go for? You, if you go for Lotha, maybe your opponent just plays Mysterious Challenger, so that definitely feels bad. And anything, honestly, everything else is just kind of awkward here. Uh, Big Game, I mean, the thing is, maybe you Owl here because later on you can almost certainly use Big Game Hunter if the Mysterious Challenger comes up next turn. So. All in all, just kind of a, a pre precarious position for a call. Using the owl first, though, is also kind of kind of risky because if this is Avenge, yeah. you're, you're, yeah, you're potentially just true, giving it. Well, though, if it is Avenge, you do have big game Hunter in your hand. So you actually may want to set up if this is Avenge. Right. But uh, this is actually, it would wow. work out better if it were. Oh, no. but the no, mind is. games, Nyman making it seem like it was Avenge, but now he gets an extra Shredder. Yeah, and, and, and this, uh, this is a really bad spot for Coleman here. 
He is pretty far behind in this board. And strangely enough, oh, oh dear. Wow. I was going to say, strangely enough behind in resources. And now there's a challenger to really rub things in. This is the, the strength of Secret Paladin just displayed for you right here. I mean, Reno's one of those decks that's, you know, considered to be something that's pretty good against Yuga Paladin. You have all these answers. You have a way to get back up to full health after you've been pressured. I mean, he has Reno in hand, and we're still looking like this is a horrible spot for Colomon. And actually, not going to go for the Mysterious Challenger wow. quite yet. Yeah, the, the big thing here, I think, is really the the Divine Favor early on that gave Nyman so, so many too, additional yeah. resources. Oh, definitely. Because normally, the, uh, the Warlock decks are able to tra exchange resources with uh, more aggressive decks like the uh, the Secret Paladin decks, and uh, eventually sort of run them out of gas. But here, Nyman is just not going to run out of gas. He has he has actually drawn more cards than Kolomon thanks to that Divine Favor. Yep, and uh, those juggles pretty good. Gets the clear, gets the full clear. Only has to use a shield and mini, but now six minions on the board and Kolomon. Even if he had the AOE, it wouldn't even be that good because the Avenge would uh, go on the pilot from the Shredder. Right, and that's exactly what Naiman's thinking here. Interesting that most players would have gone for that Mysterious Challenger right away. I mean, it came off the top, it was perfect. But in this situation, Naiman's saying, okay, you need to clear my board first, and then after this event has gone off, then I'll get the second event from the Mysterious oh, Challenger, and now awesome. you're in real trouble. Yeah, then I'll just reload. You know, Mysterious Challenger is a, a very strong, independent threat. And, uh, you know, Naiman recognizes that he already has quite a bit of threat already. And it's also a, an excellent turn for that value muster there. You know, he was able to play the Knife Juggler into muster against the board of multiple One Health minions, which really helped solidify his board presence and keep the threat on Kolomon. The downside of uh, not playing the Mysterious Challenger is that uh, you don't get to filter the, the weak top decks out of your deck just yet. So for Naiman's next turn, he's more likely to draw a secret than he, than he would have otherwise been. Like, otherwise, he would have been very likely to draw a different card. That's mm -hmm. probably right. more useful. It, it is, assuming he is planning on playing Challenger next turn, uh, it, it still is you know, oh. only a single uh, single turn. And this is Colomon pulling the trigger. To, yeah, forced to use it just for 14 healing here. Oh, and, no, and there there's the event. That's the so that, that, actually, that actually does end up uh, punishing Naiman just a little bit, uh, well, a little less value from the Challenger. Yeah, he couldn't have played the event here anyway, though. So, I mean... It's true. It, that so, actually would still be in his deck, regardless. Right, and maybe he draws it the next turn anyway? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, actually, no, what, he already played the event. What am I talking about? He played about? one Avenger. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, That is Revenge Down, so. <laughs> uh, but Naiman just continuing the juggle plan. Yeah, he knows that there's no Hellfire here. You probably Hellfire in that situation because there's really no burst damage other than Blessing of Kings mm -hmm. and occasionally True Silver. So I, I like, I mean, I like the, the read here from Naiman saying, like, okay, you probably don't have Hellfire here. Or if you have Shadow Flame, then you don't have a minion to pair with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Twisting Nether is not available just yet because it does require that uh, eight mana and Goleman only going to have seven. Here, here, Naiman, uh, yeah, he gets, uh, you know, very meticulously playing his minions and, you know, attacking one, one by one into the Reno, trying to maximize the ability for him to maintain a strong board presence as well as kill the Reno, thanks to the jugglers. It certainly is quite a strong board, and Coleman still without Shadow That is not what you're looking for. He has fire. Twisting Nether, but he's a turn away from casting it, and he may not get much more time. I think he has to just tap for the Hellfire. I don't, I don't see any other way to really come back to this game. Right, there's lethal on board right now for Naiman. I mean, so, I mean, this is a nightmare for Reno, for the Reno player, right? Uh, there's Shadow Flame, oh, but he doesn't have the no. mana anymore. That sort of would have worked if he got it as the first card drawn that turn. With the big game hunter, right? the big yeah. game hunter. It, it would have still left two minions, two pilots, two pilots yeah, one of which would be oh, Avenged. Yeah. <laughs> it would still, still be a very bad, rough situation yeah, for true. Coleman, but, uh, and, and, and again, I, I want to, you know, reiterate just how powerful Divine Favor was in this game. Yes. You know, we look, Nyman, Nyman has three cards left in his hand. That, that's two more than he would have had at this point if it weren't for Divine Favor. So it, it just enabled him to just keep this pressure on so much more than he would if he was just naturally drawing off the top of his deck. And I like the fact that he went for a play that forced his opponent to have something like Hellfire, which is a one of in the entire deck, right? I mean, if you play the Mysterious Challenger, you could get blown up by something, maybe like a Big Game Hunter so here the, or the, the Hellfire. Avenge goes up. No, he's, he was hoping Avenge would go on to one of the four threes right. and be able to Big Game Hunter it. Absolutely. But that does not happen, and Kolomon concedes, evening the match at one to one. Absolutely. So really good play by Nyman there, bringing, bringing it back to one to one. I mean, pretty good match so far. And uh, what are we going to see going forward with the deck remaining? Uh, well, we we see that Nyman has won with his Paladin deck, uh, Coleman with his Warrior. So uh, Nyman did have that Tempo Mage deck. Most of the Mage decks we've seen in this tournament so far have been Freeze Mage. It's true. Uh, how do you think the the Tempo Mage deck uh, lines up against what Coleman has remaining? I think it should be 
Should be quite all right. We didn't see many fireballs, but I'm sure they're there. So that might give him <laughs> some reads to to end games. And uh, that the last deck was a um, was a warlock from uh, from Naiman. And looking at his entire lineup, that's probably a zoo because. Uh, all yeah. of the decks that he's playing seem to be minion-based, aggressive decks. Yeah, Nyman is playing uh, a pretty aggressive lineup. Uh, we actually were talking earlier uh, about how a lot of Nyman's success last year did come with aggressive decks like Hunter. Right. And uh, so it's no real surprise to see him having a very aggressive lineup here as well. Right. So um, if it's a Zoo Warlock, that, that might actually struggle against Coleman's decks. Depending on uh, if he finds a Hellfire next time. Well, Coleman does have that, uh, you know, a little greedier style of rogue deck than the Oil Rogue with, with the Auctioneers. And we did see uh, that get kind of punished in one of his matchups earlier, where if he had a little bit more of a, uh, of, a of a faster version of the deck, he, he might have been able to come out on top. Yeah. Right, and we've seen a lot of the pro players essentially play kind of anti-aggro, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of was their downfall in this situation. So maybe Nyman has the right idea, and if he can kind of punish that rogue for being a bit greedy, it will work out well for, for, excuse me, well for him. You well, we are into it. the next game. It will be Nyman's Tempo Mage deck against Coleman playing Warlock. Yep, it's going to be that, that combo Warlock. Obviously, again, players cannot switch decks between games. Nor can they have two different Warlock decks. No, they cannot. Uh, Coleman <laughs> really needs to find a Hellfire or at least a Shadow Flame in, in this one. From my experience, it's quite important to get that early clear against the Tempo deck. Yeah, the, the key for the Tempo Mage here is just applying early pressure, and Nyman has exactly that. He has <laughs> source, two Sorcerer's Apprentices into Flame Waker. He has a, the perfect curve, really. He can summon this girl and then play you know, <laughs> Sorcerer's Apprentice into Flame Waker into Shredder. And if Coleman does not find specifically Hellfire, too, because Shadow Flame can often be uh, a little bit too slow because you're not necessarily able to keep a minion in play yourself. I want to talk about this Mullen for a, get, for a second. Do you think Coleman was thinking that Nyman hadn't made his Mulligan yet because the cards were still there? Uh, they, they fall down though, right? Uh, I believe so. I believe you, <laughs> I believe you can tell once your opponent has Mulligan. You've had a lot of Mulligan kind of uh, <laughs> the, the, mind the, games. The stare down. Yeah, exactly. I do wish that, that you know, both players just saw the Mulligans at the same time, that you didn't get information. Right, right, you weren't right. encouraged to wait, but I'm exactly. sure they'll get fixed eventually. Yeah. Coleman with a decent hand here, I suppose. Oh, zero Ooh, mana, zero wow. portals. Oh, uh, that's what's in the box? It's a free box, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> more free things. Do you just play that out right here? I you think you do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think. I guess Demon Wrath is a pretty big consideration, it I suppose. Is? That's true. And it's you might keep Demon Wrath against the Temple Mage oh, because wait, of this. Oh, not play it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think Demon Wrath was something that he was a bit concerned about. And this is a board that you would Demon Wrath. It's true. Yeah. That would be an excellent Demon Wrath. And it should be in the deck, so. Almost certainly it is there. And uh, here we go, zero mana Frostbolt going to hit that. Uh, <laughs> hit the Imp King boss, let's see what the missiles right, go. So 25, oh, I don't even know the percentage on killing the Imp King boss, but there it goes, kills it off. And are we going to see a kill on both of these? Nope, it's going to go to face. We're, yeah, we're just going to see face. If, if either attacked into one, the other could kill the same one. Though this does set up a potentially powerful Shadow Defender Bolt. of yeah. Argus. Uh, Coleman could use Defender and clear off both of the uh, Source of Apprentices if he wanted to. Yeah, I think that was a Pretty poor result from the Flame Waker right there, because those imps are going to trade for the Sorcerer's Apprentice right now. Yeah, and the Imp King Princess. boss was frozen as well. So. Yeah, yeah, so maybe it w if he maybe hit the Imp and not the Imp King boss, or hit both of them, that would have been much better. Yeah, but Nyman now has the uh, the option to play this piloted Shredder, and he still has that Tidehunter that he hasn't played yet. And you know, he uh, you know, in in the the words of Smork, he's missed quite a bit of damage by not having those in play. <laughs> Indeed, but we can't blame him for playing around the, the Demon Wrath. It, it is a card that's uh, no, almost certainly in the in Coleman's mm -hmm. deck. What do you think about this Shadow Bolt in the hand? Obviously, we're kind of uh, looking at the Defender of Argus, the prior play, but I mean, Shadow Bolt's not something you typically see. Usually, it's just the Implosion and the Dark Bomb, but lots of removal here for Colon. Maybe it's because of the OTK potentially has in this deck, just wants to clear everything. Uh, Shadow Bolt, I mean, because you're playing Reno and, and you, you, you generally have only singletons of anything, you're kind of in some cases forced down to uh, things that wouldn't be really considered pre you know, premium level, level spells and removal. And I think Coleman may have just wanted a little bit more removal uh, against some of the aggressive decks that, that he would expect to run into with his lineup. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it's like, like Brian mentioned that uh, in Reno -like decks, sometimes you have to play cards that are not as powerful as some other cards just to have those 30 different cards. And uh, Shadow Bolt is a card that you really want to tech to uh, to be a better against uh, against particular decks. Like right here, getting rid of the Flame Baker, it was quite all right, I would Ooh. say. Fireball is pretty nice here. 
And he, now Nyman, Nyman's probably just thinking, please don't have Reno. Yeah. <laughs> please don't have Reno. Not now. Exactly. Because we are going into Colomon's turn six, and he is <laughs> would be gaining 21 life. Oh, he's not, he's not that ball. rich, but he's still yeah, a able, little, he's still able to money. restore quite a bit of his, uh, <laughs> of his health here, and he's no longer just facing down lethal. Has some pocket chains right here. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, gotta go for that heal bot, which will put him out of range of dying right now. Unless there's a frost bolt. He's not rich, he's just well off. <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> say that. All right, what are you going to see after this unstable portal? Almost certainly going to be played here, I would imagine. Yep. Yeah, so right now Nyman has uh, he has six damage on the board. Fireball represents seven because of the Mana Worm. Arc uh, the Unstable Portal, rather, represents an additional point. And ooh, oh, oh, my wow. goodness. Wow. That's actually pretty interesting because right that... Assassin can play it right now. Yeah, he could. He can actually... And, and that's like... That represents a lot of damage that's very difficult for Coleman to interact with. Yeah, he'd Best have, he'd have to shadow flame something something really big to get that off the board. So what is Nyman's read here? Does he think I that Colomon went for the heal bot because he was kind of a holding on for to the Rainer for later, or okay, it looks like he just wanted to hedge his bets and kill off the board. So but. here, what what Nyman uh, what Nyman did here, I believe, is attempt to play around the possibility of power overwhelming right. plus shadow flame right. because it's one of the few things with the amount of mana that Coleman does have that could actually get that seven five stealth off the board. Or a mind control tech. He also had four mm -hmm. minions. On yeah, the board. that oh, that would be another true. another possible option so as well. All right, so can Coleman stay alive? Yeah, Arkane call him into a Doomsayer. From the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, frankly, that, that I think that's about his out here. I mean, he can heal himself with Earthen Ring. He would go to 16. He's already facing down 11 on the board and uh, has to suspect there's some burn on the other side. Yeah, realistically, probably there's Raider and uh, Farseer. Just hope that there's no Fireball. Is, uh, it's, is, it's, like it's possible you know, the, the, Ar the Arcane Golem may be the only way he can actually potentially win, yeah. but there, that's, it's such a <laughs> such a small <laughs> percentage chance that he'd have, he'd have a chance to win after that. Even if he did get super lucky, uh, right. a little bit unfortunate for him that the the, the stealth had. What, what's it? Even oh, that's shadow flame like, here, and if, if yeah. something how, small comes how off, how small does that have to nine? Be? No, that is yeah. still. Well, well there's <laughs> another fire. Uh, you can't cast both this turn, but it still is exactly lethal yeah, with the nine lethal. plus one from the ping. At sixteen, so nine. Wow. Winning with his Tempo Mage, going up two to one in the series. Yeah, that was that, a good attempt though with that. Uh, with those parts here. Yeah, shadow absolutely. Flame. Mm -hmm. So that Raven Hall Assassin proving to be key there. I mean, every basically those unstable portals have been working out pretty well. Obviously, the Murloc Tidehunter not the greatest, but I want to talk to you guys. Some damage in. I did get some damage in. I want to talk to you guys about his decision to bring that Tempo Mage because we've seen Freeze Mage in the past, but one of the downsides of having Freeze Mage is you're forced into some certain bands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that with the ban in, in the Conquest format, uh, it does really, you build your decks in a certain way that you, you're, you're either planning on uh, on banning a particular deck, like we heard from a number of players throughout this event. They're like, I built my, my lineup like this, I banned this. And that's just strictly what they do. Uh, and you know, maybe if your opponent doesn't have that deck, you switch things up. Uh, Tempo Mage, I think, is... You know, quite possibly a reaction to the expected popularity of Druid, yes, as exactly. well as yeah. uh, as Paladin. Uh, I think that the Tempo Mage with the Flame Wakers and we yeah, saw Arcane a bunch missiles. of Arcane Missiles, yeah. th it tends to be uh, a good matchup against those styles of decks. Yeah, I think it can work quite well with those Arcane Blasts and all the early tools to to clear those. And and yeah, the Druid matchup is always huge. There was a moment in time where I d where where it was um, not doing us well since Druids were playing Darnassus Aspirants, but. Mm -hmm. There's almost no aspirants around right now. Some players are still playing it, but not that many. It has been interesting to see sort of the the rise and fall of Tarnas <laughs> aspirant as and uh, rise again and fall again, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 really sort of the cyclical nature of uh, of the metagame, uh, and in particular, just the builds of particular decks. You know, we now see living roots used much more frequently, whereas uh, Darnas aspirant uh, sort of held that role for quite a while. Yeah, the mirror entity Darnas aspirant. It's just uh, <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> for the mage. Yeah. Huh. yeah, but at the same well. time, if you have those cards in your deck, it makes it that much worse again you know, something like Control Warrior. I mean, I've cast mm -hmm. a lot of Chinese games, and in China, they feel like if you're running things like Darnassus and Living Roots, that, that Control Warrior is actually favored in that matchup. Mm -hmm. wow. I mean, every, every card that you put in that is a lower power card, uh, and, and those, are, those are great utility cards, they're great, uh, you know, uh, e early reactions to aggressive decks, but against, uh, against decks like Control Warrior, they are going to give you a little bit of weak spot. All right, we're getting into this next match. Game number four, Nyman one game away from advancing to the EU regionals, or see, EU championships, my bad. And uh, yeah, going to be this game, going to be the zoo, it looks like, against Coleman's 
Reno, which <laughs> hasn't worked out well for yeah. him so far. Uh, now that's a good hand for Coleman right here. It doesn't get much better, so is this third try? Yes, but uh, this might work out. If there's a time that this stake is going to pick up a win, looking at the starting hand, this should be it. Yeah. The zombie chow is uh, you know, the, the best thing you can do on turn one against pretty much any aggressive deck, and it answers this uh, flame in quite well. Yeah, and uh, also the Iron Big Owl, there's always something to silence in, in a Warlock deck. Maybe in, it's an Erubian Egg, maybe something else, but it, it's, it finds the target. And not only, not only that is Hellfire as well, yeah. so you can clear the, the uh, middle turns of the game quite easily as well. Yeah, too. playing the Reno version of, the, of this uh, Control Warlock only runs one copy. It's pretty nice to pick it up early. Right, that's typically what you want to see as the Control Warlock player against a more aggressive deck. You want to see that Owl into the Hellfire because you know some sort of crazy sticky minion is going to be on the board. Unfortunately for Nyman, typically the strategy for the more aggressive Warlock is to go for damage first and sticking the second, but only really had that Haunted Creeper to put on the board. Now he has the Nerubian Egg, which is which is pretty good here, uh, especially considering Coleman has just used his Owl, so he won't be able to to neutralize it quite so easily. Yeah, and the Dark Iron Dwarf is an excellent follow-up to the Egg. Right, going to be able to pop that the next turn and turn that into a 4-4. Gets double 4-4s on the board, which is pretty hard to deal with for a Control Warlock. Yeah, Hellfire doesn't quite got it. There's also the Mortal Coil, but there's only one. All right, so we see what we've been predicting for the last couple turns going to be this Dark Iron Dwarf come out in Rubin and a Dark Iron Dwarf on the field. They're best buddies hanging out 4444 across the board. And what can Coleman do about this? Ooh, a Soul Fire. <laughs> he could that, technically clear the can, board. <laughs> if he really wanted to, he could Archaic all of the Soul Fire. I suspect we will not see that play. Well, to be fair, I mean, I giving a zoo mana isn't the worst. It's actually not terrible. It's I don't not, know. It's I mean, the, the, <laughs> there is the threat of you also just are, are you know ripping your hand apart with the Soul Fire, too. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, no, it's, you, you'll discard the, the coin. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's definitely not great. I mean, no, it's, I like the soul fire for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I actually think that that soul fire. One of the things that's that's great about soul fire is that it can sort of help open up your combo range effectively in terms of how much burst damage you can do. It can also just be a great removal spell, as we saw right there. Yep. And uh, Nyman keeps up with the pressure. Imp Kang boss into Dive Old Alpha. And the Imp Kang boss is quite good here because it does make something like Hellfire substantially worse. Uh, it's another four health minion, and if uh, if Coleman does cast that Hellfire, it'll actually add uh, another 1-1 one, one minion to the board. I think you might still go for it, though, because you just Hellfire and you can use the Mortal Coil on the Nerubian. You're taking a significant amount of damage off of the board. It's going to be four from the Nerubian and, th and four from the Dire Elf Alpha as well, so you're taking a quite a significant amount off. And then from there, you can maybe use your Antique Hillbot potentially Potentially, but a lot of pressure, like you said, onto Coleman here. I suspect that will be the play we do see. It will leave Nyman with, uh, it looks like, three damage on the board and do three to himself. Yeah, that's, so that's actually scary. Coleman because will be down to 12 uh, against three power already in the board. That, that's the bad number. It's kind of like against <laughs> with, uh, against the Warlock with uh, six mana. It's kind of like when you play against Druid. And you are, I don't want to be at 14 because the Druid might have 14 damage. Well, the Zoo Warlock with the power overwhelming into Doom God does deal nine extra from the hand. So. Yeah, if there's anything left in play, we do, oh, just, we, ooh, wow. we do just see Healbot here. Very oh defensive here. And wow. I mean, yeah, you could die to that play, but for Druid, I mean, it's until turn nine. As the Warlock, you never really keep Doom Guard or Power Overwhelming in your opening hand unless you have definitely something you want to activate, like a Nerubian Egg. And this so. is fairly brutal here because Nyman has Lothep. Nyman is actually Absolutely. able to shut out all of Coleman's wow. spell based answers, which includes that Hellfire, which he could have cast last turn. It's a Reno or Bust. Nope. It looks like Bust. Is he me. just dead? He can, he can play. He can play Lothab. He can play our King Golem, but he can't play anything that gets enough damage off this board. Yeah, I think we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> there's just oh there's nothing goodness. you can do. That Lothab was so well timed, and even that little bit of extra damage from the Doom God. I mean, right now, Nyman has 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. He has lethal on board. <laughs> Look at Nyman. He's just <laughs> relaxing <laughs> and back. And the like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> I just beat Reno twice with aggressive decks. Yeah. No problem. The, the, Coleman is just <laughs> doesn't know what to do. I want to point it out that this is the third game in a row where Coleman has so Arcane Golem and Twisting Nether in his hand. Wow. <laughs> Maybe the deck was just a little bit slow for for the aggressive lineup from I mean, Nyman. It, it seemed crazy, but that Arcane Golem might have saved him if he went for it earlier. And there it is. Nyman is the winner. He will advance to the Europe.
Winter Championship next month. I know, just great play by him and just a great story, honestly. Someone who was suspended, was unable to play last year in the championships, coming back, basically a comeback year for him, and right away he's showing, you know, his he's putting his mark on this season. Yeah, I mean, this is really a, a sort of a, a redemption story for Nyman, I think. He is, you know, looking to prove that, that he belongs here, and, uh, you know, the way that he played here, it was it was excellent. Yeah, I didn't really spot in, like, any mistakes. He knows what he's doing. I think that the lineup that he brought was an excellent meta call, but he made it very far, and uh, even though he came from the loser's bracket, it doesn't matter. He's in the top eight. He's going to be fighting for that $100,000. In some ways, coming from the loser's bracket is actually even harder, right? There's so many more matches that you have to win. We haven't seen him this entire time on stream, but he's definitely proved himself. I think this is loser's bracket round nine? Yeah, I it's, it's something like that. There are a, a lot of matches. I mean, we only showed so many on our, our stream, but uh, you know, these players have been battling out all weekend, and uh, this is what for. This is what the culmination of it is. He is going to be moving on to the Europe Championships. Yeah, on the other hand, Coleman just really disappointing to see that he falls down twice on stream. He was so close. Had to just go one and one to make it. Just one win in the last two matches after coming this far. Falls just short. Dreams crossed, Travitz. <laughs> yeah, we saw him uh, getting a little bit uh, <coughs> erect there by, with this, uh, <laughs> with this uh, slower slower combo decks, but he did win a lot of matches to get there. So even though the audience back at home saw him play twice and lose twice, those were the two games that he lost. Everything else that he played off stream was uh, were victories. It's true. I mean, you, you know, the, the the story that that we see at home may may be shaped by those uh, those uh, results. But uh, you know, he did extremely well to get to this point. And uh, you know, there are many more chances for players to uh, to reach the World Championship at the end of the year with the Hearthstone Championship Tour throughout all the seasons. All right, so yeah, I'm sorry, I just got some stuff in my ear <laughs> for a second there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no and uh, we are we don't have an interview, unfortunately. And uh, we're gonna throw it uh, to the break in a second. J any last words, guys? Uh, just, I mean, I think that, that so far we've seen, you know, uh, great games and, uh, you know, a, a whole lineup of many unknown, some known players who've made it through. And, uh, yeah, I think that, that this has been an excellent event, and I'm looking forward to casting the next match. Yeah, one more match to go. We have seven amazing new new players coming in. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, definitely, I'm not going to be casting the next one, but I'll definitely be watching it to see who is going to be the final eight winter uh, championship participant. All right, so we have our next match. It's going to be Lemmy Hopwar versus R O L. Follow us on Twitter, guys. At play, sorry, sorry, Bunny Hopwar. My, <laughs> my mistake. There you go. And follow us on Twitter at Play Hearthstone and on Facebook, at Hearthstone. And yeah, we'll see you guys next. And stay tuned. <laughs>